Hello, I'm Mr. Hansel. I teach Principles of Technology. Uh, it's an applied physics course, which means that uh, we try to take the physics concepts in this class and we try to uh, make it applicable to what these students um, might actually encounter. Uh, one of the things that we notice in Principles of Technology is a good handful of the students do go to uh, the Career and Technology Center, the CTC. Uh, <clears throat> when we go through the various units, uh, such as the thermal unit, uh, we'll be talking a little bit about automotive, which some of these uh, students go through. Uh, with the pressure unit, we talk about uh, manometers and testing the pressure differences in an HVAC system and some of these students uh, they do go through uh, the CTC in order to work on HVAC systems so we do try to make uh, the course applicable uh, for what the students might encounter uh, now I do have a lot of the information from the class posted on Schoology that you guys can always uh, take a look at it uh, if a student uh, is missing class uh, they can look in that folder and uh, see what's going on uh, they can get a digital version of the document that they can submit as well uh, I would encourage students uh, especially if they do better uh, by typing in responses rather than writing them uh, to use those digital documents it makes it a little easier to submit them to me as well then uh, so under the first day folder, I do have a few documents for our class. Uh, the one I'm going to be looking at is the uh, PT Physics at Cocalico. Uh, it's the file called Introduction. Uh, so the course goals for the class, uh, we want to build some strong critical thinking skills, problem solving strategies, habits of scientific thinking. Uh, we also want to build an understanding of the world uh, wonders, I'm sorry, of the physical world around us and to allow students to make connections between material learning class and real life application using hands-on approaches. Uh, that's something that, uh, again, I had uh, just had said about wanting to use the real life applications in order to teach some of the concepts in the class. It's always good as well uh, to do that critical thinking uh, approach um, mixed in there and problem-solving strategies because uh, these students are going to come across things especially if they're going to the CTC and such uh, they're going to come across some problems uh, in real life uh, that they're gonna have to try to figure out what the issue is um, an HVAC technician who can't troubleshoot or problem-solve uh, might not be the the best HVAC technician uh, out there and the same thing with a mechanic uh, so we do try to provide them with some kind of po uh, problem-solving strategies, uh, critical thinking uh, skills. Uh, but again, it is also nice to get uh, some of the whole what is physics all about, uh, the wonders of the world uh, around us as well. Uh, for the instructional methods uh, that we use in the class, uh, we do have students working on projects uh, periodically throughout the course. Uh, the projects uh, help to demonstrate an application of what was learned. So, for example, uh, in the mechanical force unit, uh, the students uh, will be building bridges, and that's going to be demonstrating uh, mechanical stress and forces. Uh, in the uh, thermal unit, they'll be building uh, houses that we will check to see uh, how well insulated they are. Uh, how well they can retain the heat uh, because during the thermal unit we look at things like home heating strategies, uh, insulation uh, techniques that we can use inside the home in order to keep heat from flowing from the inside to the outside during the winter months and flowing from the outside to the inside during the summer months uh, so to help us maybe save on some heating and cooling bills. Uh, so uh, they do projects uh, in the in the class uh, for a lot of the units in there. Uh, we also have peer discussion and analysis through use of lab groups. Uh, they share their findings. They learn from the work uh, that they themselves and their classmates uh, do. Uh, I do like to go over a lot of the materials before they would submit them, see if there's any problems, any questions, anything like that. A lot of the course is 
uh, relying on hands-on stuff like your labs and projects. Uh, that way, if they're not a fantastic test taker, they can still do decent, at least in the class. Uh, because I know that some of the students that uh, we get in Principles Technology, uh, they're better at uh, showing us what they learned using their hands more so than just by taking uh, a test in the course. Uh, so we do try to do uh, a lot of labs and group activities, uh, projects in the class so that they can demonstrate uh, their abilities and what they learn through hands-on techniques. And then, of course, we have uh, the questioning for key instructional methods uh, through a question-driven discussion. Students uncover physics relationships and applications. Uh, some of these are going to be questions in the labs. Others are going to be questions that we would be uh, asking during discussion time uh, after they would be done with the lab, uh, sort of helping them through an analysis of the lab. Uh, it's something as well that the students usually aren't a huge fan when you answer their question with a question, uh, but we found it does sort of help uh, in forming conclusions uh, and allowing them to uh, bridge information from what they already know to new concepts, and it helps them to retain that new knowledge. Uh, for the evaluation in the class, uh, we do use unit work, uh, guided notes, uh, we call them text times, uh, projects, labs, uh, and tests uh, throughout the unit. We'll also be looking at building projects. Again, uh, the bridge project. Uh, we have the boat project, uh, houses to demonstrate heat flow, and then we have mousetrap cars for mechanical work demonstrating torque. And then, of course, our final is going to be a cumulative final exam. Uh, that one, every bit of information from the beginning to the end. The nice thing about the cumulative final is I just pull questions from all the tests uh, that we've had in the past and those tests would be open for the students to look off of and study to prepare for their cumulative final. Uh, so I'm just gonna say right now that if uh, they would like to better prepare for that none of the questions that they're gonna see on the final uh, would be a question they haven't seen before on uh, one of their previous tests. So uh, tests are a good way to study for that stuff um, for the final exam. Uh, great ways to study for tests would be using the guided notes, uh, the text times, looking over labs because I do tend to have questions on the test dealing with labs that we had done, checking for their understanding there. Uh, we have questions dealing with some of their projects too. Uh, again, it's because we want to check for the understanding there. Uh, so that's basically the gist of the class. Uh, a lot of times they will be working with partners. Uh, they usually work pretty well together uh, and they tend to get their work done. Uh, I do have drop boxes available on Schoology and I do post a lot of the stuff in those Schoology calendars. So if ever you would I want to see what's going on in the class when certain things are due. Uh, all that you'd have to do is check the Schoology calendar and that information will be there for you. Uh, as well as uh, when certain assignments like drop boxes and everything when those would be due. So at the bottom of that document I do have my email that if you would uh, like to contact me uh, if you have any questions or concerns I would say feel free to contact me at my email address down below and I will do my best to get back to you uh, within that 24 hour period. So if you'd have any questions then by all means feel free to contact me. Uh, you guys all have a fantastic day and I look forward to working with you with my students.